Welcome. It's so good to be with you this morning. And welcome to Providence Church, where our vision is to see those who feel disconnected from God and the church find hope, healing, and wholeness in Jesus Christ. My name is Pierce Drake, and I'm one of the pastors here. Whether this is your first time with us, or this has been your community for a long time, or maybe you even found us during COVID, we are family, whether we're together or distant. But if you are new with us, I'd love for you to pick up your phone and text welcome guest to 31996. It's just a quick way that we can connect with you, get to know you, and we also have a small gift for you for visiting with us. If you're joining us on YouTube and it's Sunday morning, I'd love to invite you over to prov.church for our best experience. There you can jump into the chat, check out the notes for today's services, even get your Bible ready to go. And we also have live prayer that you can click on and some of our prayer team is standing by to pray with you right now. We love it. And as a reminder, if all this stuff, interactive things are not your cup of tea, well, hey, double click on the video and it will go full screen and all that stuff will go away. Just one more thing, as we say around here, life is better together. So invite someone, take this moment, copy this link, send it to a friend, share it on social media so we can lean in together and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to guide us. Well, we are honored to start our worship service today with Pastor Gary. So lean in. Here we go. Welcome to church. Welcome to worship. We hope that you are able to sense the blessing and the power of this moment and are completely available to it. My name is Gary and I'm one of the pastors here. We are thankful, so thankful that you are joining us in this time of worship as we continue our series, The Fruit of the Spirit. Today, we focus on kindness, goodness, and faithfulness because we believe the Spirit of God is stirring in a fresh new way. Kindness, goodness, and faithfulness are things that the Holy Spirit will grow up and mature in us as we stay in step with God's Spirit. Before Pastor Jacob comes to share the message, we will sing and worship together around the kindness, goodness, and faithfulness of God. Hear these words from Psalm 86, and may they be our guide as we continue in this worship moment. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart, I will glorify your name forever, for great is your love toward me. Hallelujah.
hello and welcome to Providence Church. My name is Jacob. I'm one of the pastors here, and it is a joy to be with you. One of the amazing things about uh, this time of worship is how many people have been able to connect with us all over the place as we do online worship. So we welcome you. We hear from people all over the country every week, and it's just been so um, amazing to hear people's stories, to hear where they're from. And so whether you're one of those uh, who join with us all the time or are joining us for the first time, we offer you a big welcome. In fact, you can see on your screen right now, if you're a first time guest, a way that you can let us know that you're joining with us. We love <laughs> when you do that. And so you can text uh, welcome guest to that number that is there. Or if you're joining us online uh, on our website right now, live, you can just click the link there and there'll be a way that you can give us some information. We'll follow up with you. We even have a little gift that we'll send you this week uh, to your email. So thank you for joining us. Last week, uh, we shared that we will continue to worship online as we look towards a return to in-person worship for some of you in August. So I just wanted to thank you for your patience, uh, your graciousness as we try to make the very best decision for Providence Church in this time. I did want you to know, though, that we are planning another drive-in worship. So many of you have been a part of those this summer, and our next one will be Friday, July the 31st. So just a couple of weeks. So there's two opportunities, a 6.30 p.m. and an 8.30 p.m. It's super fun. You just drive in. If you want, you can bring some chairs and set them by your car or just stay in your car. We'll have some uh, prepackaged uh, treats for you, some fun giveaways. And this uh, next drive-in on July 31st will be themed around back to school. So parents and students, we'd love for you to make a, a special effort to join us on that Friday night. For all of our students, we'll have a special packet for you that'll have some things to help you prepare for going back to school. And especially for all of us who come, uh, there will be a time in that worship service that we will spend in prayer, praying for students, praying for teachers, praying for administrators, as many of you are preparing to go back to school, whether in person or in a virtual way. And we know that that's been uh, a very stressful and heavy time. And so we'd love for you to join us on the 31st. We'll just pray our way into uh, this fall and uh, what we believe are the good things that God has for us. Uh, also, the next night, so that's July 31st, the following night, we'll have a special kind of fall kickoff for our students, Providence students. So that will be incoming sixth graders uh, through graduated seniors. Uh, we'll still have the stage and everything set up in the parking lot. And so you can uh, register for that event to come on the next night, August the 1st. On that note, I want you to know that we are still partnering with our community, partnering with schools, partnering with families in many ways in this time. Just a couple of weeks ago, some of you heard about a need that we had in our community. We were able to give uh, $10,000 to help some students in our community who didn't have a place to stay. Homeless students have lodging for this entire uh, school year. So I wanted to say, you know, thank you for that. We were able again this month to give a significant financial gift to the Mount Juliet Help Center. So, so many of you who used to worship with us in person, you know, once a month we would bring all this food. Well, we have not stopped our partnership with the Help Center and have been contributing financially so that people can get the food they need as well as many utilities and other help. Um, this week, uh, we're working on a project for Rutland Elementary, which is super fun. You'll be hearing more about it. We're creating uh, first aid kits, what they call boo-boo boxes for every classroom at Rutland Elementary. School is going to be different and kids won't be able to go to the school nurse for some of the normal things that they used to. So they're going to have a boo-boo box, <laughs> a first aid kit in every class uh, from us to say, we love you at Providence Church. Rutland Elementary is our neighboring school. So, so some of you will be able to, to partner and be a part of that. This week, right here on this stage, we baptized an elementary school student uh, and a middle school student who were able to come uh, with their families. Um, they couldn't wait till we get back, gave their lives to Jesus, and were baptized right here. Um, on Saturday, Pastor Regina led some of us on a walkabout through our community. Uh, we're not in Australia, but we walked through our community and are continuing to walk through the neighborhoods uh, where the tornado has left devastation. That work has not stopped. Pastor Regina has been leading, in fact, the whole county effort. She continues to do that. Uh, and we were able to go and check in on these families that still have needs. We are still there. I, I'm telling you all that to say thank you. Uh, your financial commitment uh, has been remarkable in this time, and it makes so many of those things possible. In fact, our financial giving during this time of not even being able to meet in person 
uh, remains above budget for this year, which is quite remarkable and due to your faithfulness. And so thank you. You see on the screen right now the ways that you can give financially to the church. There are a few ways that you can do that. And one of the things that has kept us financially strong in this time is that so many of you who used to give in person are giving online or sending checks in the mail. And so many of you move those gifts to a reoccurring gift. That's what my wife, uh, Rachel, and I do. We have a reoccurring gift that goes to the church, whether we're here or not. And so many of you have done that, and I wanted to say thank you. If that's something you've been thinking about, uh, I would love for you to do that today, to take that initiative to um, one of those ways, whether online or with your phone, set up a reoccurring gift so that you can continue to be a partner with what's happening here at Providence Church. Thank you so much. I have found that I notice a difference now when I put something good in my body and a difference between that and when I put something bad in my body. So I didn't used to notice that as much, but as I'm getting a bit older, I can notice now a difference quick if I put something good in my body and uh, the difference if I put something bad in my body. Why am I telling you that? Uh, because I like Taco Bell. I know that my, not many people would want to admit that. Uh, it amazes me how many people would not say they like Taco Bell, but I like Taco Bell. Um, nobody else will say I, I like Taco Bell. Amazingly, franchises still grow all over the nation. The, the drive through <laughs> Providence is packed out, but nobody else will admit it. So I, I want to admit that. I feel a little bit of shame saying it out loud, but I also feel freedom because I'm not living uh, I'm not living a life of lies like some of you are. But here's the deal. I don't feel good after I eat Taco Bell. I, I, I'm trying to think, how could I describe how I feel after eating Taco Bell in the parking lot by myself? Um, bad. <laughs> that's the word. Like, that's how I feel. And I'm not trying to disparage Taco Bell. Like, you may be a stockholder in Taco Bell. I have been lining your pockets for years, so I, I love you, but um, you're probably on your yacht and don't care. But I don't feel like I'm putting good in my body when I eat a Mexican pizza. <laughs> I don't even know what's in a Mexican pizza. But when I put good things in my body, it feels good. So actually, probably with the same frequency I go to Taco Bell, I also go to our local juice bar here in Mount Juliet. And you may think that's that's weird. Well, I live a complicated life, okay? <laughs> but I, I go to the juice bar a lot too. And maybe you have one of these in the town you live in. It's a place where the ingredients are all natural, uh, all fresh ingredients going to juice, smoothies, these wonderful bowls of goodness. So fresh fruits, fresh vegetables go into your cup and you drink it. And when you drink it, you remarkably feel good because what you're putting in your body is good. But here's what I've noticed when I go to our juice bar. Just walking in the door makes me feel good. Isn't that interesting? Like, I walk in the door, and I can see him chopping up some good stuff behind the counter. Uh, I get a warm welcome, and I smell healthy things. I smell fresh ingredients, and I just feel better standing in there. I'll go over to this case that they have. They have all these foods. They have these sandwiches where, like, sprouts are coming out. Have I ever eaten one of those? No, I have not. But it makes me feel good <laughs> to look at it. Um, I just like being there. I like reading the descriptions of the smoothies. What I'm saying is just being in the presence of all this good stuff makes me feel good. But imagine if all I ever did was walk in the lobby, say hi to the wonderful staff, and then turn around and leave. Like, I would feel a bit better, but just think about all the goodness that I would leave on the table if I didn't take the opportunity to take it in. God wants to grow good stuff in us, beautiful fruit we've talked about, but it's it's in us. This verse from Galatians 5 says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Could you imagine that God wants to grow those things in you? So you'll feel better if you get in the presence of God. However, you might do that. It might be just watching worship this morning. You know, to get around the Spirit, you'll feel so much better. But something different happens when you let God in you, when you let the Spirit come in you. What happens, you know, Jesus talks about it as a baptism. Like, what happens when it covers over you? I wish you could have seen these students this week, like Alyssa, who's going into the eighth grade, and see the water come over her head to cover her. And I believe that Paul uses this image of fruit to give us um, 
something in our minds to begin to think about, what would it be like for fruit to grow in me, that these things become evident in my life, things like kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. That's where we're going to spend our time this morning on those three, you know, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. And uh, I talked last week about how there's kind of two ways that things grow in a garden. Really, there's one main way, and it's all the stuff that we can't control, stuff that we can't even hardly explain. We try to with soil and light, photosynthesis, and all these things grow, which is really cool. There's that type of growth, but we also talked about the intentionality of a gardener. So while there's this miraculous growth, there's also this way that the growth can be uh, tended. Somebody comes alongside of it. We, we talk about staying in step with the Spirit. So the way I think about that is there are some things that are only God, if you want to remember that phrase this morning. There are some things that are just like only God, like only God can grow in you kindness and goodness and faithfulness, only God. But let us not neglect that we can be intentional in our own way uh, to grow things and tend things. So that might be this part that's like, only me. There's actually some things that only you can do in your life. Uh, so if you're looking to put emphasis on one more than the other, I would go with the only God, right? That's the good stuff, like only God. But what happens if we just say, only God, but I have no part in that? I'm not really up for doing anything intentional in my life. I think that would be almost like if we were handed an amazing smoothie with that green tint, which lets you know there's some really good stuff in there, but we just held it in our lap and never took time to take a slurp. I would love to tell you all about how you can be kind and how you could be good and see goodness coming out of your life, how you can be faithful. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, that's what we're looking at. But before I do that, we will have to know about the kindness and goodness and faithfulness of God. So give me just a few minutes on that before we think about what it means for our life. I've noticed with about 20 years of sitting in chairs and opening up Bibles to teach myself and to teach others, that's about how long I've got in this of being a pastor. About 20 years, I've noticed that so many people can't grasp what kindness and goodness and faithfulness would look like in their life because they have a messed up view of who God is. Like there's been some stuff that's happened that's sort of distorted who God is. So hear what I'm saying? Like there, there, there are times when we can't even imagine what kindness would look like in our own lives because we've, we've got a messed up view of God. And that could be because of like how our dad treated us or because of years and years of insecurity and rejection. It, it could be because a Bible teacher or a preacher like me posed God as one to avoid because God only has fire and flames for you outside of the small chance that you could get everything right in your life. And so with these images of God that aren't really scriptural, we can kind of get off a bit. And in that place, we can never live into the attributes of God's Son, Jesus, that we're being told are available to us through the Holy Spirit. For us to move forward... We have to understand that God is in every way kind. It makes me feel emotion because in my own life, God has been abundantly kind to me over and over and over. And God's kindness doesn't end. God's kindness is everlasting. So God is in every way kind. Some of you, even as I say that, you're like, are you sure? God is in every way kind, and God's kindness is everlasting. What's that mean? God's kindness stretches from one side of eternity all the way to the other side. There's a banner of God's kindness over the world right now. There's a, there's a, a, a way that God's kindness envelops every part of your life right now. Some people will say, though, well, have you read the Old Testament? You know, the God of the, in the Old Testament is pretty scary. That's a pretty scary God, and I get where that comes from. But when people start talking to me about how scary God is in the Old Testament, I ask them uh, if they would read it again. I get where it comes from, and reading the Old Testament can be a chore. It can be kind of hard to, to trudge through. But here's what I found by reading through over and over and over again. The everlasting kindness of God is as evident in the Old Testament as it is in the New. Why? Because that is the very nature of who God is. 
I want to dig right, right, right into the middle of the Bible where, you know, you'd hardly ever get in this. There's a book called Isaiah that's really, really long, and there's a chapter, chapter 54. Who would ever even get to chapter 54? And there's a scripture there uh, where uh, God admits his anger with the people of God. Whoa. Anger doesn't mean the absence of kindness. As we're looking to grow and mature in how we understand kindness, this is saying you can be angry, but that doesn't mean it has to be absent. From, there's a way of being angry and not uh, being mean. So here's what God says. Interesting verse. God says, in a surge of anger, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. I think I need to read that again. God says, in a surge of anger, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. He goes on to say, God goes on to say, to me, this is like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah would never again cover the earth. You may have heard that story where water covered the earth. Well, after it was over, God said, I won't ever do that again. He says, so now I've sworn not to be angry with you, never to rebuke you again. And then verse 10 says this, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be, renewed, be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. God is staking his claim of a promise of unending love, and he's sealing it with his kindness. He's made a promise and he's sealing it. And what I want you to hear this morning is that this is not just an old promise. This is not just something that we read about in the Old Testament, but it is one that is fully ushered in with Jesus. There are verses like this one I'm going to read to you from Titus. They're, they're all over the place about the kindness of God, that God's kindness actually shows up in Jesus. So listen to this. It says, when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of righteous things we had done. That's why your preacher who said you had to get it all right was wrong. Not because of righteous things we'd done, but because of his mercy. He saved us. If you've been with us this summer, listen up. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by what? By the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us. How has he poured it out? generously through who? Jesus, Christ our Savior. So that having been justified by his grace, which means we've been made right by the goodness and kindness of God, the only God part, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. I don't know how you have thought about God, but if you have seen him as anything but kind, and I know that some of us have, if you've seen him as anything but wanting to pour out on you an everlasting kindness, even when you are in your deepest rebellion, then I'm praying over you right now. I am. In my heart, I'm praying over you. I'm praying over myself that we could hear the truth like with spiritual ears, that we could see the truth with spiritual eyes, that God is actually in every way kind, willing to seek us out, find us, bring us back, and has a kindness that stretches from one edge of eternity all the way to the other end. The kindness of God will go to the farthest lengths to come and get you. And that kindness comes in Jesus. It has appeared to us in the sending of Jesus. So God is kind, eternally kind. He has an everlasting kindness shown to us in Jesus. God is good, so good, eternally good. God is faithful. He's faithful to the promise he made in Isaiah chapter 54, that even when the mountains are shaken and the hills are laid low, his love for us will not be shaken and the promise cannot be affected. The promise cannot be broken. So God is kind and God is good and God is faithful and he's poured out his Holy Spirit on us. And guess what? That Holy Spirit is gonna grow in you. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness. And so we have to ask ourselves, I have to ask myself, is my life showing the evidence of the kindness of God? What's the evidence of the kindness of God? Kindness being expressed in my life. Do people say about me, oh yeah, I know him. Do they say about you, oh yeah, I know her. She's the kind one. 
This is hard, guys. <laughs> All right, this is hard. It, but it's worth it if you'll hang with me for a second. If God is good and grows goodness in us, shouldn't people who know us as Christians say, yeah, I know him. He's good. He's good to me. I see goodness in his life. How would I describe her? She's the kind one. She's good. She's kind. If God is faithful and never breaks his promises, even when the mountains are falling down, then shouldn't it follow that we, as we find ourselves in a time where it feels like the mountains are falling down around us, if God is faithful in those moments, shouldn't people look at us and say, they are faithful. I see faithfulness in them. They, they've been faithful to me. They've been, they've been faithful. And, and, and we begin to kind of mirror Jesus, the God's son sent to earth, because of the spirit, God's spirit that's been put in us. So because God is kind and God is good and God is faithful, we begin showing that kindness and goodness. I'm not going to, I don't have any tips for you today. Here's how you can be kind. <laughs> here's how you can remember how, here's how you can rouse up goodness in your life. No, I don't have that. It, it, it's only through the work of God happening in your life because God is good, God's self. Jesus says that we will be known by our fruit. So Paul, when he's writing in Galatians, he's actually hearkening back to something that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 when he was talking about religious people. Like, you want to you know how you know who they are? You know them by their fruit. You know them by what grows out of them. Not by our accomplishments. Not by who we're associated with. Not by our assets. Not by our neighborhood, not by our pedigree, not by our cleverness, not by our strategies, not by where we vacation, not by how we get it right, not by how we get it wrong. We are known by our fruit. You will be known by what grows out of you, which is daunting, right? Like, how are you? How are some of us? How are you going to do a 50-year turnaround? <laughs> you know, some of you are thinking, man, I've been known as a jerk my whole life, right? How am I going to be known as kind? Some of you students may be thinking, I have not been faithful to God, I don't feel like, in high school. How am I going to start my senior year and be known as the faithful one? They're going to laugh at me. How are you going to start growing goodness in your life when the first half of your life has left a wake of destruction? There's only one way. Only God. Only God can do that. Only believing that his kindness is everlasting and that his goodness is extended to you. And he's faithful to finish his promises. And then there's this part, right, about only you, about what only you can do. You're the only one who can say, I am going to stay in step with the Spirit. You're the only one who can say, I'll change what I'm taking in. Right now, most of us are letting our screens disciple our lives. I got this thing, I get this thing every week on my phone that tells me how many hours per day I'm on the phone. And most, most, many of us right now are spending hours and hours on a TV screen, on a phone screen. Only you can regulate what comes in. And, and what I'm saying to you is God is being intentional with us and his spirit, what he's growing in us. So shouldn't we be intentional with God? And here's what I'm thinking. I think often we stand in the presence of God and we see his goodness. We see his kindness across the counter, but we're not willing to say, I want to take that all the way in. I want it to do a change in my life. We don't actually allow God to come inside. But when we do do that, this fruit starts growing in us. So what if this week you took one time when you were going to mindlessly flip through your screen and you said, instead, I'm going to read Galatians chapter 5. So I want you to, I'm going to say it a couple more times because you're going you're gonna to be on your phone sometimes like, what did he say to read? Galatians chapter 5. All right. Galatians chapter 5. I want it to sink into your mind. So there might come a moment and say, instead of taking that in, I'm going to read what God has to say to me. Or maybe you're going to go for a walk and be attentive to the Spirit and what God is doing around you. Or sit and have coffee with a friend with your Bible open. Or maybe you want to start each day with Galatians 5.22 that says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. With a prayer every day so those words could be doing a work in you. Here's what Jesus said. He said, by this... Everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. By this, everyone will know you're my disciples if you love one another. So let's start there, people of God. Let's start loving one another so they will know us as kind and they will know us as good 
and they will know us as faithful. Amen. Eternal God, we acknowledge you as the gardener of our souls. We remember, O oh God, in this moment that you created us out of dust and clay and formed us and called us good. We remember in this moment, O oh God, that you plant even the seed of your spirit within us. O oh gardener of our souls, would you tend to us in this moment? Would you pour in the compost of your word? Galatians, Lord, stir it around in us that we might mature in terms of the fruit that you have put on deposit in us. Grow kindness, goodness, faithfulness, 
May it spring up in us in such an amazing way that others would look at us and see fruit on display. Not for our sake, but for your great glory. We are available to you, God. We need you. We plead with you in this moment. Have your way that the world might be redeemed by your spirit. Thank you for this precious holy moment. Thank you for the word that teaches and instructs. And we wait with expectation with how you will breathe and move in us. In Jesus' strong name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of blessing or benediction or sending forth comes in words of challenge today. Let the seed mature in you. Let others see fruit on display in you today and this week. And as others see it, may they experience God in a fresh way. You are blessed. We are blessed to be a blessing. So simply be in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Geary, for that prayer and those benedictional words for us today. They were impactful for me. I hope they were for all of us joining online today. I love how Pastor Jacob brought us back to the beginning. He brought us back to this foundational understanding today of who God is. A lot of us, myself included, struggle with this idea of putting human attributes onto God. And, and how God sees us and loves us and, and faces us. And we really shouldn't. It was just a great reminder today. He read out of Isaiah 54, where it said, even when the mountains shake and even when everything's going crazy, God's love and his kindness and his goodness and his faithfulness are everlasting toward us. What a beautiful truth for us to hold on to, to remember, to cling to today. I've been struggling finding words in this season in life, just all across my life. I've just been struggling finding words, which if you've ever met me or just seen me on here, you would know that's kind of not my normal. And I was talking to Pastor Angela, who usually is with us offering great wisdom at this time of our service. And I was telling her about this and I was asking her some questions and she suggested this book we both love to read. And it's just this book called Every Moment Holy. Um, I don't know who wrote it, if I'm honest, um, Every Moment Holy. But what it does is it's giving me these words and my wife, Claire, these words in this season to bring us back to who God is. And I don't know if this is for you. I'm just, I don't get any kickback for this book, but hey, check it out. Go to Amazon, check it out. Every Moment Holy. It's just given us a great rhythm in this time to be intentional and remind ourselves of the goodness of God. I love the last words of that song that we sang by our love that the time is now for the church, the body, the daughters and the sons of God to arise and they're gonna know us by our love. Listen, as we continue to look at what happens when we walk in step with the Holy Spirit, the fruit that begins to grow in our lives, I wanna invite you, if you missed it or maybe you saw it, to go over to our website at prob.church slash messages and check out our previous series. It was called The Promise. Like I said, maybe you were here for it, but it would be great to go back and check it out again because it was a foundational series on who the Holy Spirit is in our lives. Hey, also don't forget, we would love to see everyone at our third drive-in for the summer on Friday night, July 31st. And if you're in middle school or high school, come back that next Saturday, August 1st evening for a Providence Students kickoff. You can register for both of those events at prov.church slash sign up and they're free. Hey, finally, if you were with us today and you haven't yet texted welcome guest, do that. Text welcome 
yes to 31996. And we just want to reach out to you, know you, love you, be in community, and we even have a small gift for you. Remember, our prayer team is standing by to pray with you. And if you'd like that now, you can click on the live prayer or at any time during the week, text request prayer to that number as well, 31996. Remember to check out our website, prov.church, and our Instagram and our Facebook. We're always constantly updating those with what's going on in the life of our church. We want you to be a part of the life going on here at Providence Church. We cannot wait to welcome you back here next Sunday morning as we continually wrap up this series, Fruit of the Spirit. It's our last week with us, so don't miss it. We pray God continues to speak with you and to move in your life this week. We love you. We'll see you back here next Sunday. God bless.